Well, good morning from Leesport, Pennsylvania. Um, just shutting my trailer doors here. I left my trailer doors open last night just to air the trailer out. Um, it's 2.45 a.m. I have a 5 a.m. appointment in Quakertown, Pennsylvania. Um, but I also have to pre-cool the trailer, so I'm waking up to do a pre-trip on the trailer and the reefer unit. And yeah, then fire the reefer up and get ready to go to Quakertown. Man, rudders has to be the like one of the best truck stops. Man, these truck stops are so clean. Got my cup of coffee. Um, Pre-trip's already done, so now I'm gonna get on the road to Quakertown, Pennsylvania. So I don't know how well you're gonna be able to hear me or anything like that, but if you see this, it wanted me to go this way to 476, which is a toll road. I went in and edited the direction so I could take 309. If you notice, it added 11 minutes, but it took off 3.5 miles. Um, I'm gonna take the non-toll way. Well, I'm checked in for my 5 a.m. appointment. Now I just go back into the truck and wait for the yard jockey that's right there to come to the spot that I'm parked in, which is spot number 87, and he will tell me what door to back into. I just shut my doors they already have me loaded I'm gonna slide my tandems and then go in and get my paperwork
Well, not bad at all. Hour and 41 minutes total time from the time I checked in, backed into the dock, got my paperwork. So now I gotta get to New Jersey. So I realized I didn't talk much about what I'm doing right now. Um, I'm in Quakertown, Pennsylvania, and I am heading to New Jersey. Um, GPS says I'm 91 miles away. Um, really good load too. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about it once I get down the road. I am going to stop in, um, is that Bloomberry? Bloomberry, New Jersey at that TA. I'm going to stop there and get some fuel, I think. Um, I can get it for a pretty cheap price. Uh, minus IFTA. I think it's like $2.93 or something like that. So I just pulled out of the facility. I got to stop filming. I'll see you all in a little bit. delivery um, very tight you basically enter through an alley um, I think I'm gonna stop right here and go and check in spooky So there's the truck in the dock. That's the alley that you enter. I pulled over there, backed up, and then came back through this parking lot, nosed up almost to like, the well, all the way up to the gravel right there, and then about three pull-ups to where you get straight with this truck, and then you can Hit the dock door. Like I said, I'm here getting unloaded astronomical lumper fee. Um, definitely probably mob ties here in New Jersey. Um, $350 to, I don't have my paperwork, but the trailer is about three quarters of the way loaded. Um, 34,000 pounds of um, like coffee creamer. Um, yeah, they're unloading me right now. I'm here. I'm here like an hour before my actual scheduled appointment. A um, little bit about this load. It was 92 loaded miles, um, 45 deadhead miles. All in was a hundred and what is that? 137 miles. Um, it was a refrigerated load, so it ran at. I wonder if they're honking at me. Um, it ran at 35 degrees start and stop my reefer turned on one time um super easy load kind of a local load from quakertown pennsylvania to where i am in new jersey i can't pronounce where i am t-o-t-o -T -O something i i don't know how to enunciate it anyways um or even pronounce it i'm not even gonna try um super easy load over six dollars a mile um i got paid eight hundred dollars to take this load um absolutely crazy uh i got lucky i definitely got lucky um and the cool thing was i booked this load through a broker that i deal with in minnesota that kind of told me hey man we we have this lane now so maybe if i need a short haul one day i can give him a call when i'm out here on the east coast and get this load um but i have another load that's picking up today but not until 6 p.m. tonight. That's why I took a short little load just to generate even more revenue for the day. Um, 
But yeah, I will talk a little bit more about the load, I guess, after I'm unloaded. I don't know what else can I can say about it. Um, I think I told you how many miles it was, refrigerated load, it wasn't super heavy. Um, and I'm not far away from my next pickup later on today. So yeah, we'll catch back with you all later. Well, I just checked in for my second pickup today here in Leesport, Pennsylvania at Americle. They gave me dock door number 38, which is somewhere over there. Well, fun little fact about this Americold here in Leesport. Um, I was here the other day for the exact same load I am picking up right now, and I broke down. Um, I had just gotten loaded, or I was in the process of getting loaded, and... I don't know how to explain it. I have a spin-on fuel filter. And on the bottom of that fuel filter is a glass bubble with a twist drain. That twist drain failed and I lost all my prime in the truck, lost all the fuel twice in the spin-on water filter or water separator filter. Um, so I had to have them unload me and wait for somebody to bring a part for me to get it changed out. But, uh, you know, I had to get take myself off the load as I was being loaded. I thought the broker was going to be furious. Um, they, they were actually pretty cool, man. Um, the broker was pretty cool. Oh, man, of course. Of course. I got to back into that spot with that truck there um but anyways i am back here again hopefully this time i'm able to actually get loaded and not break down well i made it into the dock but let me show you something real quick don't be this guy um after you are loaded he is double parked there's another truck on the other side of him um and he made it very very difficult for me to get into this door now because I'm a professional I just pulled up over here over yonder here slid my tandems all the way to the rear so I didn't have a lot of tail swing and was able to maneuver and back into the dock but yeah don't be this guy blocking all the docks after you are loaded just came out here at Americold, told me to open up and back all the way into the dock and track the wheel. So I'm getting loaded early. I am unlo or unloaded. I'm loaded here in Pennsylvania, but let me show you what I'm hauling real quick. Look at this. Meatless chicken nuggets. Meatless grounds. I like it. Well, it's time to seal the trailer. Wow. So I got a hook truck behind me and he just shut his truck off. Good for him. 
Well, trailer sealed, I'm loaded with 26,000 pounds of meatless grounds, which I'm assuming is like tofu grounds or something like that. Uh, meatless chicken. Um, yeah, so I'm loaded now at Americold in Leesport, Pennsylvania. Now I'm gonna go find a spot to park for a while and get a split sleeper in. All right, look at this sign behind me, truck parking only. I'm gonna share a little secret with you all. Right over there yonder is Cabela's. This Cabela's in Hamburg, Pennsylvania off of 78 has two huge lots. The lot right back there, that's a huge dirt lot. And then this lot right here. And they want all semi trucks to park in the spaces that they provide us. Don't be that tanker guy back there parking in customer parking lot. Even though he is far away from everybody, they don't like that. I'm gonna share a secret with you all. A lot of Cabela's and Bass Pro Shops have truck parking um, throughout the country. Um, I, I stay at a lot of them. I've stayed at ones in Texas, in South Carolina. There's a couple of Minnesota that allow semi-truck overnight parking. And like I said, look at this. Two huge lots and they're barely full. I mean, it, it's not even near full. Um, there's probably 40 trucks here with two enormous lots. Once again, the Cabela's is a little bit of a walk um, from the truck parking, but they don't, they don't hate truck drivers. Just like I said, don't be that guy. There is huge lots to park in. Um, that's what gets us kicked out of places like this. It's almost 1030. Um, I'm just out taking a walk and in the previous two clips, you saw how much room is still left. Um, here, I'll even show you this. Like, I mean, wide open spots, wide open spots. Still at 1030 at night at this uh, Cabela's truck parking lot. There's two huge lots here in Hamburg. Um, but I'm gonna walk back to the truck. I fired it up, checked all the lights, and I'm gonna get on to uh, Massachusetts. I got about 325 miles to go. Well, here I am in Massachusetts. Um, really crappy drive here. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about it after I check in. Um, they got one truck in the dock right now. There's a bunch of trucks on the street. So hopefully I can get unloaded quickly. Uh, but yeah, once I check in, I'll tell you a little bit about what happened last night. All right, let's talk about my drive out here to Fall River, Massachusetts. Um, I thought it was going to be like a five and a half, six hour drive. Um, it ended up being six and a half hours. Um, and that was because I was not aware that a tanker exploded on I-95 in Connecticut, um, like Norwich area, I think. Um, exit 15 or 16. Um, so yeah, I had to find a different route on how to get here because the whole highway was closed. There was signs way back on like 287 uh, before you get to 84 letting you know that 95 in Connecticut was closed So I was able to find another route here. It was just it took a lot longer than I thought it was going to um, But I'm already backed into a dock half hour before my scheduled 8 a.m. Appointment um, They're unloading me. I got a lot of what well, you saw yesterday in the clip what I have but it's a it's a full truckload um, super light though, but it's a bunch of different products. So I'm sure it's going to take a while to break down all the pallets and count and crap like that. But yeah, the drive out here, man, um, I didn't get a lot of sleep yesterday. So I ended up stopping 
stopped at a rest area and actually found a parking spot and took like an hour nap. I was kind of, I was getting drowsy and I don't like driving like that. Um, I never want to get to the point where like my head's bobbing. Um, made a phone call, I actually called driving with John and talked to him for a while because he drives a lot at night. So we kept each other awake and yeah. Minus the man, I saw a video. All if I if I get a clip of the video or whatever, I'll, maybe I'll put a screenshot of the video or the video in here. Uh, but yeah, big explosion in Connecticut. A tanker and car collided, and right underneath an overpass. Um, I read today in the news that they're gonna have to remove the entire bridge, and yeah, who knows when they're gonna get I ninety five open again? But yeah. Oh, I'm just going to hang out, probably finish, a, well, I'm not going to finish this cup of coffee, have a couple of sips and then climb in the bunk until they're done unloading me. a safe spot to park i am gonna stay here for a while go get a shower make some food and just hang out until i don't know maybe like seven eight o'clock tonight and then i'm gonna deadhead to my customer pickup um i'm up here in massachusetts right now and i have to deadhead all the way to pennsylvania um i had a load that wasn't ready to be picked up later this afternoon um, so I just made a decision. My customer load is super important to me. It gets me back to Minnesota. So I'm going to deadhead all the way to Pennsylvania. Um, anyways, I thought I'd break these two quick loads down for you. Um, first off, these were two great loads out of the East Coast. Um, I did one load from Pennsylvania to New Jersey that paid $1,800. And then I did a load from Pennsylvania to Massachusetts that paid $1,400. Um, so all in, the gross for these two loads was $2,200. Um, I had a total on these two loads, including Deadhead, of 592 miles. That is a rate per mile of $3.71 on all miles. Um, I got 7.9 miles per gallon on that 592 miles. That means I burned a total of, I rounded up 75 gallons of diesel fuel. I got diesel fuel minus IFTA for $2.91 in New Jersey. Um, at the TA in Bloomberry, I believe it is. Um, it's the first, it's the second exit, I believe, on 78 in New Jersey um, from Pennsylvania heading east. Um, the first load was a dairy load that ran at 34 degrees start and stop. Um, light load too, I think it weighed, weighed like 30,000 30, pounds or something like that. The second load was even lighter. That was my vegan load. Everything on my truck was 
plant-based food, which is kind of interesting considering right now I'm eating a vegan diet. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. The entire truckload, all, it was 26 pallets. Um, it ran at minus 10 start and stop. Um, light load too, weighed 26,000 pounds. So yeah, like I said, I'll just repeat this. It was $2,200 in gross revenue on 592 miles, two stops. Um, took me a total of 29 and a half hours. Um, so if you break that down, that's $74.50 per hour that I made sleeping, eating, not driving, not working, not doing anything. Um, yeah, like I said, those two loads took a total of 29.5 hours. Um, but yeah, freight's looking pretty good out here on the East Coast. I wish I could pick something up in the next couple hours and get it off my truck either today or early tomorrow morning because I do have to be to my customer by 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, and, but like I said in the beginning, I think I'm just going to deadhead to the customer and, you know, get my get my load that brings me back home. So anyways, if you've made it this far through the video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you're not, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Till next time, you know what it is. Keep on trucking.